it's a cold one and we are off to St. John Engine Rebuilders to take a look at this engine. St. John Engine Rebuilders is a local machine shop that's run by two amazing dudes, James Watkins and Nick Cormier. These guys have just about every tool you'd need to rebuild or repair just about any piece of automotive equipment which is good because we're going to need it for this engine. Let's dig in and see what kind of condition it's in. All right, I got to get the predictions. James, what's your prediction? Thrust is fucked. Nick, what's your prediction? Thrust is fucked on a bearing. All right. Any money on the line or? I'll do 20 bucks on it's not fucked. 20 bucks? All right. All right. I'm not betting any money because I need as much as I can get. <laughs> So the first thing we gotta do is take off some of the exterior components that are in the way. The oil pickup, the timing chain cover, it's all gonna come off to get at the good stuff. These camshafts are toast, so I've ordered a replacement set. The bearing surfaces in the head look okay, so that's a relief. Next, we remove the head bolts and pull the head off of the block. You can't even build your fucking wreck, man. You're wrecking the torque, man. Okay, you're gonna wreck your torque, man. Get this. 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 The cylinders look pretty decent, but we're gonna be boring them out and replacing the pistons with JE forged pistons anyway. So this surface doesn't really matter. Remember the mouse nest I found in the water pump at home? Well, it went all the way through the engine. Luckily all that will get cleaned out in the hot tank process. Let's take the rotating assembly out now. Super not stoked? Yeah. Oh yeah, that looks nasty. The bearings weren't totally destroyed, but they have definitely seen their fair share of abuse. The crank is in good condition though, so that's good. You need to start telling your mom that I'm your cousin and she needs to make me lunch too. Yeah, what happened to the fucking oven baked fucking pizza pot right in here? <laughs> it's just going this. <laughs> so. Now it's time to bore out these cylinders to make room for those bigger pistons. <laughs> We're gonna be boring these cylinders out 20 thousandths of an inch bigger than the original size to make room for those aftermarket pistons. After James sets up the size, he runs a slight cut on the top just to make sure everything's good, and then he sends her down. All that metal coming out is the original cylinder sleeve. Thank you. 
Now we're going to set up the decking machine in order to resurface the top of the block. This surface is where the head gasket will sit and the head will clamp down against. So it's got to be perfectly flat. You can tell the amount of experience necessary to use all this equipment as James uses a variety of tools to ensure that we're cutting perfectly flat and level. Now that the cylinders have been bored out and the deck is perfectly flat, we set the block aside and move on to the head. The head and valve train is Nick's specialty. He uses some pretty clever measurement tools to measure how deep to cut the valve seats based on the valves themselves. After inserting the pilot guide into the head, we start cutting with a three angle cutter tool. Purple paint is there to help Nick see how far he's cut and what materials left to remove. Now that the initial cut is done, Nick sprays the seat down with some lube and hits it with a polishing stone. He reshapes the polishing stone after each seat to make sure that every seat is done uniformly. Okay. Okay. So we've got the seats recut and polished. Now it's time to grind the valve to make sure it makes a perfect seal. The tool is set to a 45 degree angle and Nick redresses the grinding stone to make sure it's a good surface to begin with. After he's happy with the grinding stone, Nick loads the valve into the holder and grinds a new sealing surface into the valve. Now it's time to test the seal. We drop a couple valves into the head and apply a vacuum to verify the valve is making a perfect seal, which it is. After repeating this process for all 16 valves, the head is set aside and we move on to the next step. Hey guys, it's Nick from the future. Uh, I just realized that I forgot to record the process of doing the valve guides and decking the head. So although we're not going to see it in the video, it was done. Okay, back to the video. The stock compression ratio for this SR20 was 8.3 to 1, but I want a better throttle response for autocross. So for this build, I went with JE Forged 10 to 1 compression pistons. 10 to 1's a little high for boost applications, but I think I'll be able to work around it in the tuning. The first thing we have to do is get the piston ring gap set. James places the rings in the cylinder and makes sure they are square before using a feeler gauge to measure the end gap. For this build, we went with 18 thou for the top and 20 thou for the second ring. After grinding them down, he measures again and makes adjustments as necessary until they are perfect. The next step is to get the stock pistons off of the rods. The factory rods are plenty strong for my goals, so I decided to reuse them. James uses some very cool measurement tools to measure all the clearances for both the rod to crank and the piston wrist pins. Now it's time to install the new pistons on the rods.
After securing the pistons to the rods with the wrist pins, James starts the ring installation with the oil control rings, which are those little squiggly ones at the bottom. Those rings are responsible for scraping the oil off of the cylinder walls and back down into the crankcase. Then he moves on to the compression rings and positions them in the proper orientation. Measuring the main bearings to verify their size, the oil squirters are bolted into the block. They do exactly what their name implies and squirt oil up onto the backside of the pistons to cool them off. James installs the main and thrust bearings and brings the crank over to be polished. He gets the crank centered and starts polishing the bearing surfaces. The belt he is using is actually made out of cork, which is just abrasive enough to give a perfect mirror finish. After verifying the crank size and therefore the crank clearances, he covers the freshly polished surfaces with oil in order to stop them from oxidizing. The crank is brought back to the block and after a nice thick coating of oil is applied, it is lowered onto the bearings. Next, the main caps are oiled and bolted down with the girdle in place before being torqued to spec. Now it's time to get those pistons into the engine. Like always, a ton of motor oil is used to lubricate and the piston rings are compressed before sliding the piston into the cylinder. After all the pistons are in, he torques the cap bolts down. Now that we have the full rotating assembly together, it's time to move back to Nick with the head. He has to set the valve clearance, and in order to do that, he has to assemble the whole valve train with soft springs, take measurements, disassemble the whole thing, make adjustments, and repeat. It's 
very tedious process that involves removing a tiny bit of material from the valve stem and then repeating the whole thing. It took him a while, but he nailed it. The SR20s that came in the Pulsar have a solid lifter setup which are known for their loud valve trying noise. But I'm recording this voiceover long after the engine has been fired up for the first time and let me tell you, my SR20 sounds great. Oh yeah, some ASMR. As James fills the oil pump with assembly loop, it's finally time for the whole engine to come together. We had to make some adjustments to the timing chain cover to make it fit, but besides that, it was smooth sailing. The head gasket is fitted, and the head is bolted down using ARP head studs. After they were torqued down in the proper sequence, the cams were installed and well lubricated. The caps are bolted down and then the timing gears were fitted and the timing was set. Again, more lube was added and it was time to make sure everything rotated nicely before torquing the cam gears down. The rest of the pieces were then bolted on and the engine build is complete. The engine was then wrapped in plastic and it was time to take it home. All right, so we got the engine home. Really excited to give this thing a try. Um, I think this car is gonna be a little rocket ship once I get the boost turned up. Big shout out to Nick, James, and Ben at St. John Engine Rebuilders. You guys did an awesome job on this thing. I'm pumped to turn it on.